My life is infused uh, with different cultures. Yeah, I grew up in Poland, um, I was born in Poland, grew up in Germany, was living in Ireland, and now I'm here in England. Um, some years ago, after having studied here at Central St. Martins and in, at London School of Economics, uh, those, really, those institutions um, full of cultural diversity, um, back then my boyfriend uh, and now my husband took me to a football match in South London where he wanted to introduce me to his family. <laughs> yeah, he's English, that's, that's the way you do it. Um, I was amazed. I said to him, I've never seen so many English people. If you're studying in Central St. Martins and, and LSE, that's the feeling you get when you get, get out into the suburbs. Um, and I was amazed um, that these very localized cultural behaviors um, were embedded in this global city. Um, and, and, and not only that, it was making people behave in a certain way. Culture was making pe those people behave, um, dress in a certain way, um, sing in a certain way, feel in a certain way. Um, and then, at this, but at the same time, those localized behaviors were also part of a really big global football phenomenon. So as a designer and sociologist, I'm really fascinated how culture um, is driving us, is driving how we behave, is driving how we lead our everyday lives and our lifestyles. But also how we can stretch culture into other directions and how we can be part of creating culture. So, but what is culture? Culture can be high, we can have low culture, we can have popular culture, everyday culture. Culture is seen by some as a lens through which we see the world. Uh, I prefer the image of culture like a sticky glue, sticky glue that holds us together, um, that makes us belong together. It's quite rigid, uh, but, at the same time, we can, we can have some more mobility in it. But most recently, I've noticed people uh, see culture also as a, as a wild beast, a beast, a beast to be feared. And this is in the context of globalization. People seeing that um, culture has an impact and globalization has an impact on their everyday lives and on their everyday decisions. They see that the high streets are becoming the same. We start eating the same food, listen to the same music um, as, other as in other parts of the world. Globalization is seen as a problem. Uh, we fear this homogenization of culture. We fear that there's going to be a void of cultural diversity. Um, but on the other hand, I'm also seeing something else. Globalization is also giving a headache to organizations, to businesses. And here there's an anxiety rising, not because of homogenization, but because of fragmentation. Um, businesses and organizations feel they need to connect with people or consumers at a more and more local level because they know people won't accept one size fits, fits all anymore. And, and the question is always, how, how is this possible to kind of, to deal with those fragmented, with those um, localized futures, with these small little beasts of culture? So I would like to now explain you um, an, an, this idea I have. Imagine there's a global flow uh, a trend. As a sociologist, I would call it cultural discourse. As a designer, I imagine a snowball. So this, I, I love this quote here, a ball may be made to roll downhill, but its manner of rolling is that of a ball. Greek philosophers. My husband is a philosopher and that rubs off a bit. So imagine this ball is starting to roll, this, this social discourse. Uh, and as it's, it's starting small, it's getting bigger as it's rolling, it's, it's, it gets a momentum. 
Um, and it has an impact on the ground. It has an impact on the snow, on the hill. Um, and obviously, this hill is changing. This, it, it leaves a trail. I imagine the hill as the local, and the global has the impact on the local. But this is not the end of it. At the same time, the ball is picking up some snow. Is the ball itself is changing, it's getting bigger. It's changing itself, it's changing the way it's rolling, it might change the direction it's rolling. Here, the local and the global have an impact on each other. And this is where the friction is. This is where it's happening. So this is the moment when the global takes on a local character. It takes on a local flavor. So uh, last year, I was doing some cultural research um, um, at Studio Inter with our cultural guides um, in, in Asia, in China, Japan, and Korea. And we were looking at the perception of safety. So let's say this is the big snowball, safety. And imagine this, this perception of safety is flowing through the globe. And there it hits the Chinese families. And this is where the friction is in the making. The global flow, the perception of safety, is in the context of cars and in the context of children's products, is about strapping, it's about buckling. However, in China, it's different. Uh, child safety, this perception of safety, is about padding, not about strapping. It is also um, about ownership of this object, because actually owning a car seat to people, to parents, it means being part of this global um, discourse and it's an aspirational object. So safety in China is about ownership and about padding. And as you can see here in this photo, parents use um, car seats, but they don't strap children. And this is perception of safety. So here, this global and the local hit each other. And really, this is the moment when new meaning is created. And this can then have an impact on a global um, company, for example. And the global is starting to take on this local character. I find it really fascinating how um, cultural friction and global momentum, those two big forces, can create new meaning and new culture. And it is in that moment that we can stretch culture in, in, and this stretch this sticky glue in new directions. I think it's very exciting that now, us being part of this globalization, we can be part of this momentum, but also we can be in the middle of that friction and in the middle of creating new culture. Thank you.